Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Tech Sports Report. I am your host, Matt Jenkins, here to bring you all the latest in Arkansas Tech athletics. Coming up on today's show, we're going to preview the Great American Conference Basketball Tournament, and we're going to have on the show today men's basketball his assistant head coach Prince Johnson to preview that tournament from the Wonder Boys side of things. Let's start today's show off with a recap of Golden Suns basketball. It was a rough week for the Golden Suns as they fell to East Central by a final score of 67-55. Anissa Pounds led the Suns with 14 points on 5 of 9 shooting and went 4 of 6 from the 3-point range and dished out 5 assists. Danielle Frazier finished in double figures with 10 points and 8 rebounds and Cheyenne North finished just shy of a double-double with 8 points and 11 rebounds. Unfortunately, the Golden Suns didn't fare much better in Saturday's game as they dropped a 71-63 decision at Southeastern Oklahoma. Pounds had another big game with 22 points on 9 of 17 shooting from the field with 4 assists. And Kelsey McClure finished with 11 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists. Despite the two losses, the Golden Suns basketball team will enter the GAC Conference Tournament at the number 2 seed. The Golden Suns will officially open the Great American Conference Tournament against 7 seed Ouachita Baptist. With the win, Arkansas Tech would face the winner of Southwestern Oklahoma Southern Nazarene game on Saturday at 2:15. If the Golden Suns win that game, they will play in the GAC Championship on Sunday with a 1 p.m. start time. Now let's take a look back at the past week for Wonder Boys basketball. Unfortunately, the Wonder Boys dropped a heartbreaking decision at East Central by a final score of 76-73. Trevin Woods led Arkansas Tech with 26 points on 8 of 13 shooting from the three-point line. Benny LaField finished with a double-double, scoring 14 points and 13 rebounds. Arkansas Tech dropped another tough game on Saturday as they fell at Southeastern Oklahoma by a final score of 89-81. Montreal Williams picked up his first double-double of the season with 25 points on 9 of 15 shooting and 10 rebounds. Justin Graham finished with 18 points on 6 of 14 shooting from the field. And Benny LaField just missed out on a double-double with 8 points to go with his 13 rebounds, 8 of which were offensive rebounds. The Wonder Boys will enter the GAC tournament with a seat of number three, and now we take a look and see who the Wonder Boys will be facing in the tournament. Arkansas Tech will open the tournament with number six, Southern Arkansas. That game will be on Friday at 8 o'clock p.m. If the Wonder Boys win that one, they will play the winner of Arkansas Monticello versus Harding. That game is slated for an 8 p.m. start time on Saturday. If the Wonder Boys advance to the championship, that game will be on Sunday at 3.30 p.m. All women's and men's basketball tournament games will be played at Bruin Fieldhouse in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. The Golden Sun softball team opened GAC play as they traveled to northwestern Oklahoma to take on the Rangers in a four-game series. The Suns opened the first doubleheader of the series on Friday with a 4-2 win over the Rangers. Jalissa Gum went 3-4 for four from the plate with an RBI. Megan Goodnight went 1-4 for four with a pair of RBIs and a run scored. And Kara Toller went 1-3 for three with an RBI. Tola was outstanding in the circle as she took a no-hitter into the seventh inning. She finished the game with two earned runs on one hit in six innings pitched with three walks and four strikeouts. Morgan Vaughn came in in the seventh inning to get her fourth save of the season. In the later game, the Golden Suns picked up another win with a 5-1 victory. Sydney Henson was phenomenal from the plate, going 4-4 four for four with two RBIs and two runs scored. Sarah Coronado, Sarah Lachance, and Janie Knowles each finished with a pair of hits apiece. Gum picked up her second win of the season from the circle as she gave up just one unearned run with four hits and no walks and struck out ten batters in a complete game. Gum picked up right where she left off on Friday in the opening game of the doubleheader on Saturday with the 6-0 victory. Gum pitched a complete game shutout, giving up just one hit and walked four while striking out 16 batters. The 16 strikeouts tied her career high and the fourth most in a single game in program history. Bailey Schaefer led the Tech Bats, going two for four from the plate with a pair of RBIs. Coronado also went one for two from the plate with a pair of walks and a pair of runs scored. The Golden Suns Bats came alive in the series finale as Tech went on to win this one by a final score of 12 to 5. Gum and Goodnight combined to go 6 of 9 from the plate with a pair of RBIs and 5 runs scored. Lachance and Knowles also finished with a pair of hits and a pair of RBIs each as well. Vaughn picked up the win in relief going 5 innings and giving up no runs on 7 hits, 1 walk, and struck out 2. 
While the Golden Suns may have swept Northwestern Oklahoma, the Wonder Boys baseball team took on Northwestern Oklahoma, and they were looking for a sweep of their own. The Wonder Boys opened a three-game series at home against Northwestern Oklahoma on Friday, and this one ended up being quite a pitcher's duel. Kyle Wilson was rolling in this one, but got some big-time help from his defense on this play as Cody Westcott makes the dive and throws it across the field to get the out at first in the second inning. We move to the third inning with a runner at second. Marcus Wilson drives this grounder right up the middle to score Corey Thompson from second, putting the Wonder Boys up 1-0. to zero. We move ahead to the eighth inning where Kyle Wilson fans his 11th batter of the day. Then in the ninth inning, Wilson gets Northwestern to ground this one to McDearman as he gets the final out to come away with a 1-0 to zero victory. Kyle Wilson pitched his second consecutive complete game shutout since moving into the starting role last week at Southwestern Oklahoma. Wilson went all nine innings, giving up just four hits and walked no batter while striking out 11. Marcus Wilson drove in the only run for the Wonder Boys, going one for four with an RBI. The Wonder Boys bats would come alive on Saturday as they opened a doubleheader on a high note. We pick things up here in the third inning as Dylan McDearman drives this ball to center field just out of the reach of Garrett Douglas as Seth Wheeler comes around to score to cut the Rangers' lead to 2-1. to one. Down 3-2 to two in the fourth, Wheeler drives this ball deep and off the mesh wall in left field, scoring Cody Westcott to tie the game up at three apiece. A couple of bats later, McDearman again mashes this ball high and deep to left field as it clears the mesh monster for a two-run home run. Wonder Boys up now 5-3. to three. Jake Harvey added an insurance run late for Arkansas Tech as he drives this screaming liner to left field to score Connor Brady, making it a 9-3 to three ball game. Arkansas Tech would win this one by that same final score of 9-3. to three. McDermott was brilliant from the plate in this one, going 4-for-4 four four with a home run, a pair of doubles, four RBIs, and three runs scored. Wheeler finished the day going 2-for-4 with an RBI and two runs scored, while Jake Harvey went 2-for-4 with an RBI and a run scored. Trent Armstrong picked up the win going five and one-third innings, giving up three runs on five hits, a walk, and struck out eight. Quentin Bowling picked up his first save of the season, pitching three and two-thirds of no-hit innings, walking just two and striking out four. The Wonder Boys look to complete the series sweep in the second game of the doubleheader and would get this game off to a pretty good start. Mark Vaughn smashes this liner up the third baseline off the glove of Steven Deckard as Dylan McDermott came around to score, putting Tech up 1-0 to zero in the bottom of the first. Up 2-1 to one in the fifth, the Wonder Boys added some big-time insurance runs on this deep Zach Klikowski drive to right field for a three-run shot, putting Arkansas Tech up 5-1. to one. The Wonder Boys added some more insurance runs in the sixth inning as Vaughn singled up the middle that brought Marcus Wilson around to score, making it 8-2. to two. And then later, Kyle Love would drop this hit into center field to score Vaughn, making it a 9-2 to two ball game. The Wonder Boys would win this one by a final score of 9-2. to two. Vaughn finished the game going 3-4 for four from the plate with three RBIs and a pair of runs scored. Klikowski also went 2-4 for four with his home run and three RBIs and a run scored. Love also went 3-4 for four with an RBI and a run scored. Jeffrey Burkmeyer had an outstanding performance going six innings and giving up just two unearned runs on two hits, two walks, and five strikeouts in his second win of the season. We'd like to give a shout out to Kyle Wilson for going back to back in the GAC Pitcher of the Week being named Co-GAC Pitcher of the Week. So congratulations to Kyle Wilson. Let's transition from baseball to tennis as we take a look at some Golden Suns tennis highlights as they took on John Brown. We pick things up in doubles play as Annabelle Rollins fires this winner right up the middle as the number one doubles pair of Rollins and Teresa Sanchez won this match 8-0. In the number two doubles, Vandela Suico slams this return at the net. Suico and Haley Longwood win this one 8-2. In the number three singles, Cammie Ward shows off some great hustle here and drops this shot out of the reach of Julia McNeil. Ward would win this one 6-0, 6-0. In the number two singles, Rollins blasts this H just out of the reach of Eva Berry, and she won her match 6-1, 6-0. And in the number one singles, Teresa Sanchez returns this winner off the serve as she won her match 6-0, 6-0. The Golden Suns won this one by a final score of 9-0. Long, Suico, and Maria Vlaskina each picked up wins in singles play, as well as the doubles team of Ward and Vlaskina picked up their first win of the spring season. Overall, the Golden Suns were off to their first 6-0 start since the 2008-2009 season. 
We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have Wonder Boys basketball assistant head coach Prince Johnson on set with us to talk about the GAC tournament. We'll be right back. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have Golden Sun senior guard Callie White joining us on set here to talk about the upcoming part of their season and look ahead to the GAC tournament. We'll be right back. Are you a tech sports fan? Then it's time for you to get rewarded with the Fight On Rewards app. Check into tech athletic events to earn points and redeem for awesome prizes. You can also interact on social media, fan polls, and post pictures through our fan cam. The app is now available for free through the App Store or the Google Play Store. Looking to get the inside stories of Arkansas Tech Athletics? Then be sure to subscribe to Tech Talk, the official podcast of Arkansas Tech Sports. Available for free right now on iTunes. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Welcome back to the Tech Sports Report. I'm Matt Jenkins here with Wonder Boys basketball assistant head coach Prince Johnson. Coach, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing good. It's, it's, I'm sure it's y'all's favorite time of year right now. Large, <laughs> sure is. We're all around the corner, and it's conference tournament season. Yes, yes. We love it this time of year. Well, before we talk about the tournament, let's talk about this, this fantastic season you guys have had. 20-6, and 16-6 and six inside the GAC, the 11-game win streak. Just overall, just talk about the success of this past season. Um, you know, we, we started off a little slow. We, we had all new, we have all new guys this year, so, you know, it took us a little while to get going. But once we figured it out, we, we really got it rolling. Uh, at any given time, we got four or five guys on, on the court that can shoot, pass, and dribble. So it, that's what's added to our success this year, a lot to our success this year. And this team has just been really solid on both sides. But offensively, this team is stacked with three-point shooters. Mm -hmm. uh, defensively, very strong. Has there been, a, like, a strength that you've seen just really kind of, like, blossom here late in the season? I think it's our defense. Our defense has gotten a lot better, and I think that's the reason we, another reason we went on that 11-game win streak was our defense started getting a lot, especially perimeter defense, right. which is where we were struggling at earlier in the year, and, and guys st started to buy into it, and, and then we took off. And it's, to me, too, another strong thing, I really see this team coming together. Mm -hmm. uh, we, all, we always talk about it, it needs to be a family to make, yes. just to make athletics work or to college basketball, football, baseball, softball, whatever it may be, yes. needs to be a family. And this team really seems to just get along on and off the floor. Yes, they do. Uh, this is probably one of the, one of the close-knit teams I've ever coached. Uh, you know, in our, in our huddles, we usually break saying family, you know, one, two, three family. And our guys really get along off the court. They usually, they usually do a lot of things together. They go to the movies or, or, or go out to eat. They usually do it all together as a team without us coaches having to put it together. So that's, that's that's really great. And, too, kind of from a coach's perspective, you've done really, like, you don't have to worry about the team, making sure they're not, like, missing class or doing something they shouldn't be doing. I mean, yeah. they're all together, and they seem like they got each other's back through everything. Yes, yes, they, they sure do. And we have a very studious group uh, this Absolutely. year. I think it's the highest GPA we've, we've had in, That's great. in a long time. One big thing that I want to talk about before we talk about the tournament, preseason, I was not necessarily worried, but I, there wasn't a big man presence, like when we mm -hmm. had the Charles Mills, yeah. or just that big presence to roam around in the paint and protect <laughs> yes. So I was a little worried, but that was easily taken care of because this team is so athletic. I yes. mean, any one of those five guys that you have on the floor can go up and get a rebound over a seven-footer. I mean, yes. just talk about this team athleticism. Uh, we're, we're really athletic. I think Montreal Williams is our, our most athletic in, guy. That is incredible sometimes, yes. just the stuff he can do. Yes, you can't, you can't coach some of the stuff he can right. do. Um, but he, actually, he's been going and rebounding a lot better. Last game, he had a double-double and rebound. I think he had 25 and 10. And he continues to, to do that uh, along with our, our other wings who are very, very athletic. We'll have a, a successful postseason. And I'm sure that could be a big difference maker. In the, NCAA, in, the, in the GAC tournament and moving forward into the NCAA tournament, just having Montreal Williams lead the athleticism, but a whole team of yes, just full of athletes. Yes, yes, him and, uh, and Alex Brown. We have yeah. some very athletic, uh, athletic guards uh, who, who can who can play above the rim, and uh, those guys have been doing it lately. And uh, that's one, like I said, one. That's another reason why we've been successful. Absolutely. Well, let's move ahead to the JC tournament. You kick off this Friday yes. uh, as a number three seed, taking on Southern Arkansas. Talk about that matchup against Southern Arkansas. Uh, it's going to be a tough matchup. You know, they, they, they've got a really good big who, who's good and uh, uh, a guard who had, I think, 33 points the other night is, is a really good guard. 
Um, we're gonna have to. It's gonna be tough to contain contain those guys, but uh, I think we're up for the task. And this is a team that you've beaten twice in the regular season. Yes. But moving into the tournament, or at least when I played basketball back in high school, you want to just throw away the regular season because any yes. team on any given night in a tournament scenario can beat anybody. That's very true. That's very true. And then uh, moving on from a victory with Southern Arkansas, you'll get the winner of Harding and Arkansas Monticello. Yes. And moving on to Championship Sunday, so hopefully, yes. hopefully we'll get there. Is there one key? Or facet to the game that you want this team to focus on coming into tournament play. Uh, going to tournament play, I, I would I would say the uh, transition defense and rebounding. I think that we uh, we take care of those two you know aspects of the game. We'll, we'll we'll be happy at the at the end of it. Absolutely. Well, last thing I just want to leave you with: it's tournament time. It's March Madness. I mean. Everybody from just whether they're sports fans or not, they love this time of year. Just March Madness. Yes. From a fan's perspective, what just makes this time of year so special? Um. You know, I think it's just the, it's, you know, the atmosphere, the, the, the excitement of the, the, the one and done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, teams going to, you know, everybody's going to give it their all because they know if they, they lose that game, the season's over with. So you got guys who are diving who don't usually dive and, yeah. and doing stuff they don't usually do. And, you know, in, in, in tournament settings, guards are the ones who, uh, who get you to the ship. And uh, we've got some really good ones. So we're, we're hoping to, to get them 100% come tournament time. And, and take off from there. And hopefully it'll move, translate to Championship Sunday when it's the GAC Championship. <laughs> yes, we're well, Coach, that. good luck in the GAC tournament. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back on the Tech Sports Report. Thank you. I knew Arkansas Tech had an impressive history, but I didn't know that my professors would look out for my future. I knew I'd be throwing fastballs on the field, but I didn't know I'd be on the fast track to physical therapy school. I knew my art professors had years of experience, but I didn't know that I would get real world experience before graduation. I knew Tech was close to home, but I didn't know it would feel like home. Tech has one of the highest graduation rates in the state. Come take a tour of campus and discover what else you don't know about Tech. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Welcome back to the Tech Sports Report. I'm Matt Jenkins. First of all, we would just like to thank Prince Johnson for coming to join us here on the show today. And we would like to wish the Wonder Boys basketball team, along with the Golden Suns basketball team, the best of luck in the GAC Conference Tournament. We want you guys to bring the championship back to Russellville, where it belongs. So good luck in the tournament. Now let's transition and see what's upcoming for Arkansas Tech Athletics. The Golden Suns basketball team opens up play in the Great American Conference Tournament against Ouachita Baptist. That game is scheduled for noon today at Bruin Fieldhouse in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. If you cannot make it out to the game, you can watch the game live on the GAC Sports Network. Just log on to www.gacsportsnetwork.com. On Friday, the Wonder Boys baseball team will return to the field for a three-game road series at Ouachita Baptist. The opening game of that series is scheduled for 2 o'clock p.m., at the Rab Rogers Field in Arkadelphia. The Golden Sun softball team will officially play their home opener on Friday as they will host the Washington Baptist at the Chartwell's Women's Sports Complex. The first game of that doubleheader is scheduled for 3 o'clock p.m. The Wonder Boys basketball team opens their GAC tournament Friday night against Southern Arkansas. That game is scheduled for 8 o'clock p.m. in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Again, if you can't make it out to the game, you can watch the game live on the GAC Sports Network. The Golden Suns tennis team will open a busy Saturday for Arkansas Tech Athletics as they host Dallas Baptist. That match is slated for a 9 a.m. start time at the Chartwell's Women's Sports Complex. You can get a double dose of Arkansas Tech Athletics as the Golden Suns softball team will close out their series against the Ouachita Baptist at the Chartwell's Women's Sports Complex. That doubleheader is slated for a noon start. If you cannot make it out to either of the Friday or Saturday games, there will be live video, audio, and stats available at ArkansasTechSports.com. The Wonder Boys baseball team will also return to the field at noon on Saturday for a doubleheader against Ouachita. The first game of that series is slated for a noon start time, with the second game starting approximately a half hour after the completion of the first game. The Wonder Boys golf team will officially open their spring season at the Las Vegas Desert Classic being played at the Prim Valley Golf Club in Nipton, California on Sunday. The first two rounds of that tournament will be played on Sunday with the tournament concluding 
on Monday. Also on Monday, the Golden Suns golf team returns to the course for the Southern Nazarene Diffie Ford Lincoln Invitational being played at Edmond, Oklahoma. They will play the first round on Monday and then conclude play with the second round on Tuesday. On Tuesday, the Golden Suns tennis team will face a Ouachita Baptist for a non-conference match at the Craig and Kim Ward Tennis Courts in Arkadelphia. That match is slated for a 1 p.m. start time. And later on Tuesday, the Wonder Boys baseball team will return to action as they will be on the road to play Delta State. That game is slated for a 3 p.m. start time at the Dave Boo Ferris Field in Cleveland, Mississippi. Finally, on Wednesday, the Wonder Boys will close out their two-game series against Delta State with another game slated for a 3 p.m. start time. And with that, we've reached the conclusion here on the Tech Sports Report. Make sure you join us next week where we'll have more recap and analysis. And also next week, we could be potentially previewing Golden Suns basketball making the NCAA tournament or the Wonder Boys, or maybe best case scenario, both teams going to the NCAA tournament. We'll have all that and more for you next week right here on the Tech Sports Report.